I'm Nelson Nunnally from Ravenscroft School in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I'd like to show you one of the ways I use LabVIEW in the high school classroom. This number right here is 111, or is it seven? It sort of depends on if you're using base 10 or base two. One of the core concepts in my engineering class is a, a good understanding of base two because we talk a lot about digital technology. So one of the first projects I have them do at the beginning of the year is to write a LabVIEW program that can convert between base 10 and base two, and vice versa. It really accomplishes two goals for me. One, it gives them a much deeper understanding of base conversion than they might have had previously. And it also gives them a good introduction to a lot of the core things that LabVIEW can do. Sift away, take my breath. Let's put in 111 to this program and see what happens when we hit run. Ah, the number seven, which makes sense going from base two to base 10. So this is pretty simple. They're just eight inputs. Uh, eight bits, and each one of those on the block diagram corresponds to a power of two, from two to the zero all the way up to two to the seven, and then they're all added together. So I show this to the kids and I say, this is great, but the problem is we're kind of limited to eight bits here. What if you wanted to have 10 bits or 20 bits? And of course you can just keep adding inputs, but you're still going to be limited eventually. So this leads into our discussion of what we really need to make this an unlimited input, which is a loop of some sort. Hi, I'm E-Man and this is my base 2 to base 10 converter on LabVIEW and basically how this works is you can input a number with ones and zeros in binary and it'll output the correct base 10 value and in the block diagram here what it does is it basically t it counts the amount number of digits you have in the input string and it'll loop that many times and what goes on in the loop is it'll take each digit separately and then it'll multiply the digit by corresponding power of two and then it'll add those digits up and it'll give you your final base value as the final output.